Our farm is Frog Song Organics, and we're here in Alachua County, Florida, near Gainesville. And right now we have about 63 acres that we're working with, and we plant at some point on about 40 acres of that at some point throughout the year. When we very first started our farm in the fall of 2011, all we had was an empty greenhouse and a few flats of seedlings. I mean, I had nothing, I had no crops to sell anybody yet. Right now we have about 63 acres that we're working with and we plant at some point on about 40 acres of that at some point throughout the year. And we do a lot of root crops, sweet potatoes, radishes, carrots. Um, we do the Irish potatoes and we also do a lot of leafy greens, lettuces, arugula. Um, we do kale, and then we do some specialty items. You know, we've grown a decent amount of kohlrabi and fennel, you know, things that you don't always see in the grocery store. We grow some fruit crops, we grow strawberries, we do some cantaloupes, we do, you know, some watermelons, but smaller, smaller amounts of the melons. We also have a number of fruit trees on the property. So each year we plant some more trees. So we have pears, persimmons, peaches, nectarines, and plums. Over time, we've added more animals to the mix at our farm. We started with a small laying flock and then have added more chickens. We really like doing the rotational grazing and moving the chickens through crop areas um, that will be planted in the future. So the chickens can provide the fertility, eat a lot of the insect larva, um, get rid of a lot of the weed pressure and, uh, and leave, you know, leave their manure. Um, and then so as we've expanded our flock, then we also got into raising some pigs. So we haven't bred any of our own pigs, but we've bought feeder pigs and then we feed them a lot of the waste from our packing sheds. Uh, we actually started with our CSA, which is Community Supported Agriculture, and I did the equivalent of a Tupperware party. I don't know if they do those anymore. And went to, um, it was just through some friends that we had met in the community, and we went to a home nearby of a local physician and university professor who brought her network of friends and colleagues and neighbors to her home and I did a presentation for folks, told them about our dream of farming, our goal. I explained to them what community supported agriculture was and said who would like to sign up for a share. And on that night I had, you know, a dozen people or more sign up, give me money for that season's crops and we started with that. So our very first growing was really focused around the CSA. This property had not been farmed previously and we actually had to remove a lot of stumps the first year it was in planted pine so the first year you know we planted in between the tree rows and then as the stumps decomposed and we were able to take time to get them out we started being able to add in extra area where those tree rows had been when we first got here with six acres you know you have to make it work with the space that you're given and one of the biggest challenges on small acreage is doing proper crop rotations especially with cucurbits, you know, it's recommended up to a seven year rotation. So if you imagine you need seven times the space of any cucurbit crops, and we grow a number of different cucurbit crops, all of a sudden you need a lot more space. We had not really considered leasing land to start our farm. And part of that's just because of how much work and investment you put into building soil, putting in infrastructure. When we came here, there was nothing, you know, it was, there was a well and a house. So we put up the greenhouses, we put up a packing shed, we put up, you know, brought in a walk-in cooler. And so you don't want to do all that on land that you're leasing unless you don't have another option. Um, but what leasing does do is give you some flexibility. You're not tied to that for 30 years of a mortgage. Um, so with the 15 acres, we worked with the property owner to have kind of a long cancellation clause. So I believe it was like a three year notice that he had to give us like at any given point in time, we knew we could be on the property for three additional years because what we didn't want was to be told, oh, in six months, your, your lease is up um, because it just doesn't allow you to plan properly and to make investments in the soil and in the crops. And, you know, even putting down organic fertility, if you're adding a truckload of compost to a field, you want to be able to use that field for more than just, you know, one season because, it you know, you build it up over time. When we first bought our six acre property, the neighboring property owner had planned a um, green housing development, kind of the agri-hood style that is now becoming a thing. And 
had told us, you know, oh, I'm doing this um, sustainable housing development. I want a working organic farm to be part of the community. I'm going to buy you a tractor. I'm going to put in a well for you. I'm going to do all these things. And there's going to be this whole community of people that are going to be here to buy crops from you. Well, none of that really materialized. Um, one lot was sold and one home was built. And we became friends with those homeowners and they were wonderful neighbors to us and helped us in a variety of ways. Um, but that did not really pan out. So as that development did not pan out, then the land became available for lease. And then eventually we were able to buy a chunk of it. Um, the entire parcel was 300 acres, but we did not need or nor could we afford that much land. And also not all of that is good farmland. So um, what we were able to do after we had three years of production records is then we were eligible for um, financing through USDA beginning farmer and rancher loans. What happens as a beginning farmer is you don't have any production history. You can't demonstrate that you know what you're doing or you know, have even kept track of what you're doing. So uh, you really need that production history and those records to be able to get financing in the future. And even just commercial lending, like small business lending, you know, even at our credit union, I say, oh, can we get a business loan? Well, do you have three years of business history? And you know, until I did, nobody's gonna talk to you. Basically, they just, you're not, you're not gonna get financing from anybody. It would be to keep good records, keep records every day, really solid records. The reason that that's so important is that when you're in the day to day of it, in the thick of it, if you're running a farm and you're doing a lot of the labor yourself, you're very busy and how you feel about something in the moment and your recollection of something may not really be accurate to what actually happened. And so keeping good records is really the only way that you're gonna look back and say, you know what? Um, actually, I do wanna plant that variety of sweet corn again, or no, I don't, I wanna try something different. Or you know what? I need to plant more acreage of this crop because I sold out of it a lot faster than I thought. Or, oh, I planted way too much lettuce. I had tons of it rotting in the field. I mean, you might be able to remember some of those things, but when you look back and you're planning your next season, it's really hard to remember all those details. And also you can't access financing without records. And it's also just um, really hard to know what is working for you if you don't keep records and what's not working for you. And the other important thing about keeping records is if you ever want to train someone else to do some parts of your job that you either don't want to do or don't have time to do, having a system to keep records more than just, you know, when we first started, it was paper journals. Just write down what you did that day on a piece of paper. And that's better than nothing. But over time, we've evolved to a much more real time, much more accessible type of data collection. And we actually use tablets out in the field and in our packing shed and keep um, live records using Google Docs. So that means that anybody from anywhere can access the information and find out what was harvested this day or what date did we apply fertilizer to this block or what material was applied to this crop and when. And so for both organic production and just for verifying that things were done how you wanted, when you wanted, where you wanted, how much did this cost in terms of time and materials, um, keeping those records is really important. Mm -hmm.